Hello. In this video, we'll be determining the capacitance of a capacitor. We'll be doing that by discharging it through a resistor. Here's our capacitor, and this is our resistor. Now, it looks quite busy here. We've got a few things going on, and I'll explain each in turn. But that's the ultimate aim, to determine this capacitance. So, what I'll be doing is, as I say, discharging the capacitor through a resistor and we are going to use two methods to determine the capacitance. Method one, we will plot a log graph and use the gradient of the graph to determine the capacitance. Method two, we will plot the exponential graph and we will measure the time constant from the graph and use that to determine the capacitance. In order to do this, we're going to need to set up our circuit. I already have the circuit set up and I'll explain that in a moment. Then we're going to need to determine the resistance of the resistor here. It's a fixed resistor. So that's what we'll need to do in terms of taking measurements. And then once we're ready to discharge the capacitor, we'll charge it up. That will There's a charging loop on my circuit here. And then we're going to discharge it through that resistor. We'll have this voltmeter set up so that it's in parallel to our capacitor and we'll be measuring the voltage across the capacitor at specific time intervals. So there's a number of things going on here. Let me break it down for you. So this multimeter, I'm going to use that to measure the resistance of our resistor. We'll do that before we actually start using the capacitor. You'll see the circuit diagram come up as an image on your screen. And then I'll show you the physical layout. So uh, we have our battery pack over here. We're going to be using six volts across our capacitor for charging. And then we have the, so the, if we follow it from the positive terminal, positive terminal goes to the on side of my two-way switch here. There, so it's coming in here. And then the common terminal of my switch is going to the positive terminal of my capacitor. So when I am on the on, if you like here, so when this switch is in the down position, that will be my charging circuit because I'm going to be connecting the batteries across the capacitor. And then the negative terminal of the capacitor then goes off to the negative terminal of the battery. So it's just a simple circuit. So you notice I'm not charging through the capacitor. I want to do that so that I can charge it up very quickly because it's the discharging that I'm interested in for taking measurements. So charge it up quickly. And then when the switch is in the off position, the positive terminal of the capacitor, which is at the common of the switch, so the, the positive terminal of the capacitor is always connected via the switch, that's gonna go off across the resistor. That's then getting plugged in to this junction here, which takes it back to the negative terminal of the capacitor. So the discharging circuit is a very straightforward one. It just has a resistor in series with the capacitor. And then I have these two terminals here. These are going to the voltmeter. So the voltmeter tells us the voltage across the terminals of the capacitor. So when we charge it up, we will see that that goes up to about six volts. And when we discharge it, you'll see the voltage drop as the capacitor gradually discharges through the resistor. The multimeter, you'll notice here, that is set to the 20 kilo ohm setting. And these are the probes. So I'll simply just connect that across the resistor and it will measure the resistance for us. There's one final thing, which is not absolutely pivotal to our experiment, it's an additional thing. That's the picoscope, which is a computer oscilloscope. So what that is doing is that will be connected via these two jacks here into the back here. We're essentially going to use this as a voltage data logger. We'll be using that just to give us an additional set of data, because if you were to do this experiment properly, you wanted some really good quality data, I'd recommend using this. This is a really good method because I'm going to have to keep an eye on the voltmeter and the stopwatch simultaneously, and that's not an ideal setup. The ideal setup is to 
automatically collect your data and that's what this would be doing. So I'll just be showing you that as uh, the best way to do this experiment. So the Picascope, like I say, these terminals will get connected into the back of our capacitor, like that. And then that's plugged into my laptop over here. So if I just pan up there, you can see the computer there. That will collect the data. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to measure the resistance of our resistor here. We'll be using the multimeter for that. So let's get that out. We're not gonna be using the circuit, so that won't matter for the time being. All we need to be able to see is the screen for the multimeter. And I'll need to disconnect this from the circuit on that, so just on one side will be fine. Okay, so now I'll take my probes and I connect that across the resistor here. Okay, so I make that 10.61, 10.61 or 10.60 would be a better reading. Okay, and then I'll repeat that measurement. There we go, and that's 10.60 as well. So those are our two measurements for the resistance. Okay, let's connect our resistor back into the circuit. And now we're ready to start taking measurements. So I've put the oscilloscope into parallel with the capacitor also. And although th so that's our ideal method of measurement, what we actually want to do is have a go at measuring the voltages ourselves. So we're actually going to take some readings. So we'll take readings every 10 seconds, and we're going to do that for two and a half minutes. So I'll speed the video up at this point, and you'll see the readings on the voltmeter come up on the screen. So I'm gonna get the oscilloscope lined up ready to go as well. Okay, so ready to go. We're gonna charge this up. And as you can see, the voltage is 6.12 volts. That's our starting voltage there. Okay, here we go. Okay, we've now collected enough data for our discharge experiment. So what I'm going to do now is discharge the capacitor. So I just connect my lead across the terminals and you can see the voltage drops to zero. So whenever you finish with a capacitor, you should always discharge it when you're finished. Okay, so now that we've got the data, um, in video two, I'm going to analyze the data. So I'm going to take the data that we've collected, put it into my spreadsheet, and we'll use both the methods that I mentioned already to determine a value for the capacitance here. 
If you want to have a go at the data analysis yourself, I've created a worksheet that goes with this video. It will guide you through the process of put, using the data to determine the capacitance. And I highly recommend that you do have a go at the data analysis yourself.